Hey, Dram Dude, thanks for, for coming in. Yep, you are first. <laughs> the, um, yeah, we're gonna do a little something different. Um, first off, I'm still, uh, unfortunately, I'm still waiting for my computer to come back from uh, Texas. They've had it for a couple weeks uh, now. They have this thing where they're supposed to only have it. Hey, Scott, thanks for stopping by, too. Um, they're supposed to only have it for, like, you know, five days. Since, since they went over the time, they're going to refund me my money for my warranty that I paid for, thankfully. i still got four years left on it, and they're going to repair my thing, but I'm still waiting on it, and they're waiting on parts. Uh, hey, Louis, uh, good to see you. And uh, Hoagie, thanks so much for stopping by from uh, Germany, my friend. Uh, the uh, But hopefully uh, the quality will be much better when I got my computer back. Um, if it's laggy, I apologize, and uh, we'll do the best we can. So, this is on the phone, so it might get a little shaky for a little bit, but I'm doing the best I can here. So let me take the power cable out. Let's go for a little a little spin here. I'm gonna have to uh, see if I can, oh, orientation's locked. It won't let me do it that way. Well, let's just, let's just see what we can do here. We'll spin it around. Uh, these are some bottles that are already empty, so we don't really worry about these guys here. I've got some uh, guitars and whatnot over here. Let's venture our way back this way. Sorry for covering the camera. Hey, Lee. Can't stay but, uh, but a minute. Got called in the work tonight. Oh, that's not good. Um, let me see if I can get the damn orientation to flip around. Here we go. Now we're talking. Sorry about that, guys. It took me a second to find the button. Yeah, this is the, uh, this is, we'll start over here, but this is uh, all empty. That bubble, uh, the bubble 99 is really good, by the way. And, um, the uh we'll take go over here and take a look here's all the guitars and such radios and here's my new shrine that i've been working on i think uh andrew probably will 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 like that look it's got a lot of uh i'm sure of his favorites in there uh we'll start off let's see let's start from one end and just work our way around real fast i know we guys don't have a lot of time there's a lot to pick from so we've got a bowmore 18 i just picked up We've got um, a Compass Box Hedonism. We've got a Glenn Farkless 25. A Tamdu Batch Strength Number 1. A McAllen Rare Cask. That's the regular one. I already did the black before. Haven't done the regular one. We got a... Uh, oh, what is that? Knock, Knockadu? Knockando? 15. Oh, man. We've got a... Uh, Tomore Do... We've got a Glen Elgin 12. We've got a, uh, oh man, what is that? Old Particular. We've got um, a Weller Antique 107. A Winter Queen Adelphi. A West Lane five year old. Elisa Bay Inaugural Release. Sorry about the camera work. Uh, we got a Pity Vac, Pity Vac 12 year. Monocomore, 12. A Balminic, 46. We've got a Glenfiddich uh, Select Cask. A Dalmore Valor. We've done that previously, I think. The McKellen 21 Fine Oak. We've got a Glendronic uh, 21, which we did earlier. Uh, Brook Lottie 7.2. A Talisker 57, we did earlier. Arbig 23. Oh, man, that's like a power dream there. Let's go over here. We got a uh, Bunahaven Erinan Green, which is a travel retail exclusive. That might be pretty good. The Bindub, I think it's a Bindub, the Black Mountain. A uh, Tamnavulan Double Cask, a uh, Daldewain 12 Year, a Dalmore 18, a Lafroy Brodier, a Royal Brockla, Brockla, a Glen Grant 10, and a Glen Tocher 7. So there's lots of uh, samples to pick from. Uh, thanks to a uh, big thanks to Lee, uh, generous Paul. I think's in the house too. Uh, Prane and Scott. They're not able to. Sorry about that. Um, they're not really able to come, but uh, that's uh, th those are our samples that we uh, we traded uh, salsa here and there. We got the Ankelmore, which is a uh, one I haven't opened yet. That might be something that might be worthwhile. Um, Let's go over down here. The Ardbeg uh, Ereveritas I've not opened yet. 
I'd like to uh, maybe try that one. And uh, let's see, all the spring banks are pretty much done. Uh, Bunnahaven, we've got um, the Kruik Vona. That one I haven't tried, that might be worth a, a really good one. That's a, another Trevor Retail exclusive one liter. Uh, got that in a trade with somebody, uh, Mr. Lee. And uh, let's see, over here, uh, we haven't, oh, we can't open the Inchgauer or the Tinnick yet. That's for our next round. We're going to get to round the next round shortly. We do have the Glen Lossie 19, uh, the Glen Turret uh, 11, and, oh, and Lee and Paul's favorite of all time, the Strathmill 10. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, Kilkarens are all killed, sorry guys, and I've reviewed all those anyway, so if you're looking for a review on some of those, I've already done some of those anyway. Um, and uh, there's a couple other new uh, samples I got recently, a 21-year-old Alcantoshan from Berries, I did not like it that much, so we won't even bother with that. A Linkwood 19-year uh, Alexander Murray, that was uh, pretty good, that was different. The... Um, One's a Paul John, and one is a, uh, what is the other one? Oh, the, uh, the, what is that called? The Fetter Cairn 7 Battle Heel. That was really good, actually. And we already did the uh, McKinnon, uh, Red Class Black before. Uh, we've got a Cleo Moak here I haven't opened yet either. That's an option. That's a, a Travel Retail exclusive I picked up. And I uh, think that is about it. Uh, let me know if you saw something that caught your eye. One, you know, I'm trying to gonna try to do a low, a low end one and maybe a a, a higher end one, and we'll uh, we'll go with that. Just give me a comment on which if you had a favorite of of one you you wanted to see. The impeded Kalila, uh, no, I was not a fan of the 17 impeded. Uh, I gave it like a 3.25 out of five, and it was. Very heavy on the olives, so he hopes the Kalila Moak doesn't blow. I haven't haven't tried that yet. <laughs> the uh, that's the idea of the hedonism. Someone else asked for that, so let's. I got two for hedonism already, so that might be worth a that might be worth a try. We could do that. Uh, how much does that bottle run anyway? The uh, the hedonism uh, and oh yeah, and by the way, Andrew the the double the. Uh, the Johnny Walker Blacks in the closet, man. <laughs> the uh, what is the uh, the hedonism run? Is that a high end bottle or is that a uh, lower end bottle? Oh, and I just picked up this Brook Lottie, a uh, classic Lottie today too. I uh, haven't done one of those yet. Fireball, no, no fireball here, man. Sorry, it's one to one ten. That's a uh, that's a reasonably priced bottle. It's not super high. Um, so it's it's up to you guys. You, if you want to do a, a higher one or a lower one, I, I don't mind either way. If you had a a favorite pick, just to to go through. Uh, I don't have any fireball guys. Sorry. <laughs> Let's all say grace before John Glazer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I do like a lot of the campus box I've had. Uh, the only one I was kind of iffy about, and it wasn't bad, it just wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, was the double single. Um, that one was an iffy one, and I think uh, Lee and Paul shared my uh, three and a half star kind of review on, on that one. The No Name is Glorious. The Phenomenology one is fan-freaking-tastic. Um, also had a couple other ones that were really good too, but uh, those stand out as being my favorite. So anybody else before I I, I, I know Scott uh, I know Scott you like that double single man I don't know I, it it was it was just kind of it it was okay it, I don't know yeah I, I don't have any left it was from a sample actually um, but any any uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick something if you guys don't have anything off the top of your heads you want to try. Uh, with me. Uh, I'm going to go with something. Hmm. Yeah, I do have the hedonism already picked as one. I'm going to pick one more though. Let's try the something, something maybe familiar that uh, could get into on the side here, man. I'm thinking something, maybe something simple, maybe like a, either like a Glen Grant 10 or maybe, um, that Tom Navolin double cast sounds intriguing. I never. I, it sounds like Lagavulin, but it's Tom Navolin. That's kind of different. 
I don't know anything about that distillery. I haven't done any research on it. So it's kind of like a completely blind uh, tasting on that. Um, hmm. I guess let's just shoot for it. What the hell? One familiar, one not so familiar, right? Let's come over here. And I'll sit you guys back down so you're not dizzy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> the, um, that's funny, that Stroth, that Stroth Hill, uh, let me switch the camera back. Yeah, the independent bottlers I got back there, guys, uh, was the Glen Lassie, the, um, the Stroth Mill, which was horrible, and a one uh, that was a, um, Glen Turret, which actually was good. I like the Glen Turret one, I think. The next to the Glen Lossy, those those two are pretty decent. The Stroth Mill by the uh, Connoisseur's Choice, uh, Gordon McPhail, was not a, a pleasing one, so. But that's okay, you know. Let me go ahead and pour these. Sorry, I'm getting out of film frame here. Let's pour these and let them sit for just a little bit at least. Uh, the Ton of Vuin double cask, uh, it's a non age statement, it's 40%. It's probably going to be, you know, nothing crazy fancy, but you never know. I mean, I've been surprised by some 40% whiskeys in a good way, so you never know. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Sam. Uh, appreciate it. And we'll go ahead and pour us a little bit of this hedonism. I've heard great things about it. It's natural color and non-chill filtered. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by, Lee, and I really appreciate all your help with, uh, you know, the salsa and stuff. So, it's a... Uh, it's very, very well, uh, well received. <laughs> my, uh, and, and also my, um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no water on 43 and 40%. I don't think I'll be needing any water for that. Maybe on the 43, maybe a drop just for Lee, just, just to, just to give him a little poke. <laughs> anyway, but thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, the um i only do a drop or two just to open it up you know i don't uh i'm not doing it to water it down by any means i'm not doing it to uh take any burn out i'm just I'm, a couple of drops you know just to get it to that flavor to, to give you something different because if you're you might be getting a lot of floral or a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of floral or a lot of herbal notes and you might be shooting for more sweetness you might be shooting for more uh, even smoke. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but hedonism, hedonism, it's hedonism. Oh, sorry, hedonism. My fault, John. <laughs> Whenever time I think of the word, if I see the word, I think heathen, like heathen. So I said hedonism. Hedonism. There we go. Hedonism. I got to remember that. Let's start off with the um, with the the uh, Tamnavulan. I hope I'm saying that right. It looks like it's just Tamnavulan. Um, like a Lagavulin, but with a Tamna. Ooh. 40%. So, but double cask. So, you know, the other double cask that comes to mind right away is, um, the Glen Scotia double cask. And that's a great whiskey, uh, especially for an entry level. Uh, the 15 is the, the better of the two, but, um, you know, if you don't have much to spend and if you're looking for a good... Uh, Campbelltown whiskey, the Glen Scotia double cask is where it's at, and this has a similar nose in the the in not with the what the flavors I'm getting or the or the the nose I'm getting. It's the intensity of it's the same, and that might be from the double cask. But the first note I get from the Tom Navoulin double cask is uh, dried banana chips. None of us can pronounce half the Scottish names as we know his videos. I've been practicing though, man. I'm a Kruk Vona from my Choi Chick, from my uh, Kjabanach and all that stuff. So, but not having my favorite when it comes to the Erinan Green. And Ardbeg has the Erinan Besht, <laughs> which is one of my favorites. I, I wish I won that. There was a, a, a drawing recently. It's a 350 pound bottle. 350 pound bottle and um, some guy in Scotland actually won. I'm like, why can't an American win that? I actually entered like 25 times with all these, you know, um, you put your uh, Twitter page in there, you you push uh, your um, your Facebook and all your social media. Hey, Richie, thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, this I think it's going to be good. 
get a, a really good not not just the try the dried banana chips but with this you can also get some vanilla custard really slight lemon which I actually I enjoy because I don't like a real feisty intense lemon this is a little more subtle because there's a lot of cream in there can anyone tell me if Tom Navullen is a Highland distillery or a space site or where it's located? I don't have any notes next to me. Um, I'm a, I do have a computer here, so let me go ahead and take a quick look and see if I can get any extra uh, notes from distiller.com. They have a lot of good uh, references for uh, drams if you're looking for something. Uh, I don't get paid by them for anything. Um, I do use their services for doing, uh, you know, like... Um, my own written reviews if I'm doing writing or if I'm doing um getting notes like I want to know what cask is used here we go Town of Vulan uh Leoval requested it and it is from him by the way um doesn't look like it's uh too expensive um there's only been one review so far it's probably uh not very famous he uh I kind of glanced at his review and it looks like he was not too into it but that doesn't necessarily mean anything it's distilled in pots from 100% barley, produced at one distillery, Asian barrels of scotch or Irish. Okay, we already know that. American oak with sherry cask finishing. So that sounds like it's up my alley, because I like a good, you know, not just a bourbon or a oak cask, but I like a little sherry with that, like a little something different with it. It always it brings up, you know, complexity to me, but anyway. And not just the, the vanilla custard and the banana and the lemon. There's also, there's some floral, a little bit of floral in there. I don't think I would say honey though, but it's more of a actual floral, floral like, um, maybe some jasmine. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go for a sip. Hmm. Hmm. Not, you know, this is sorting only 40. It's not going to be rough, but it's got a little burn to it. Uh, it's not aggressive, though. It's, it's I'd say it's, um, it's got some good sweetness to it. Maybe that's why Lee wasn't into it as much. Uh, I do appreciate the more, you know, vanilla, banana. It kind of reminds me of a monkey shoulder kind of a taste. Hmm. Let me see. Where is this guy? I forgot to look. And I can only see so many comments. They It's like a bubble where they, they come up and they, um, they go away really fast. So I don't really get to see many comments unfortunately but it looks like this guy is a well it doesn't even say it where what area it is I can always um, Tom Navolin I can always just uh, wiki the damn thing worst case scenario and I'm sure that'll tell me where it is I'm gonna guess that it's um, as being as sweet as it is I'm gonna guess it's probably at least a Highland if not a space side let's see if I'm right um it's in Ballandalock, Banffshire, which is, they don't make it easy sometimes to find the actual region, which is really sad, because that's what usually people are looking for when they look up this stuff on here. Um, in 66, it was, it was built in order to satisfy the growing demand from whiskey blenders such as White and McKay, um, Crawford's, and Maclanays in 93, White McKay became the owners of Tamdeville and purchased uh, Invergordon. Wow. 382 million pounds. Wow, that's a that's a pretty good money. And then they closed in 95 and then um, transferred to Kendall International in 01, a division of United Brewers Group. And it looks like um, White and McKay are now owned by Imperador. But it doesn't, it still doesn't say where the hell this uh, region is. Does someone know? Please uh, post it in the um, the comments, uh, in the uh, the chat, please. Because I'm not sure. I do have a, a nice map way across the room. But um, 
I don't want to go all the way over there to look if you guys can tell me if it's a Holland or a Space Eye. That's my guess, though. The finish is not really there. That's uh, only uh, Little Jen Star be missing the fireball. No, I don't do any fireball. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by. Take it easy. Uh, what is this hat? Oh, this is from... Um, I've got a, a friend that has a business that it's called uh, Funky with a P-H, P-H-U-N-K-Y. And uh, it's like a brand that he just came up with and um, did his own design. He's got shirts and stuff. And uh, I just kind of like the design of it. So, And uh, he was given some hats and shirts and stuff out. So we uh, got a few here and there and... Uh, Give him a shout out. So check out, uh, do a search for a P-H-U-N-K-Y, I think it is. And uh, live funky. <laughs> anyway, um, but I, I guess no one knows where this is. I, I think it's part of Glenlivet, which would make it a uh, Highland. So I think I was right on that one. They have nine washbacks and six stills. Huh. They produce about four and a half million liters of alcohol per year. At space side. Okay, well, I was right the first time because it was so sweet that it made me think space side when I first tasted it. Uh, it's kind of reminds me of a bit of a Glen, um, a Benreich tin, um, maybe a monkey shoulder hybrid. If you took a little bit of monkey shoulder, had a little Benreich tin. I don't, I don't think they use Benreich in their blend for um, monkey shoulder. I know it's Knivy and uh, I think it's Bladnock, and I forgot the third one. It might be Glenlivet, but uh, it's similar. But I tell you what, the nose is decent. The palate's not bad, but the finish is just. Uh, it's a bit thin in the mouthfeel because of the forty percent. The flavor is good. The initial palate's good. There is a bit of a burn that comes right after the you're enjoying the palate. And it's a bit, I don't want to say dry, but um, the, the, the alcohol um, takes over the palate toward the end and it just kind of burns it away. There's nothing remaining after that happens. So you don't have a, a nice mouth full of, you know, vanilla custard or graham crackers or, you know, what you're looking for after that. It's uh, definitely not... Um, you know, if it was 46, 48 percent, it might be a whole different uh, type of uh, deal there. But I would, I mean, I think he gave it two stars. After, since I've already kind of, I'm going to give it maybe, I'd say I'll probably give it 2.5. 275 if I'm feeling generous, but not, not you know, a hell of a lot better than a Gervin, Gravon, put it that way. <laughs> That was horrible. But anyway, let's let's look and see what old Mr. Lee said about it. I'm just curious if, if he had similar notes at all. Um, he likes to talk a bit about the the uh, distillery and who owned them and all that. So let me get down to here to, to do his tasting notes here. It, uh, let's see. Double cast permanent yeast. Okay, we already know that. It makes some oily yet undefined legs in the Glencairn, yeah. The nose is definitely an indicator of young whiskey. Sherry oak barrels is kind of similar to Tamdu initially. Sadly, the sherry notes uh, fade over time, which that's true. Um, it's weak. There's, uh, there's a bit of, you know, oak and sherry sweetness, but he called the finish uh, medium to short, sweet and oaky before ending up uh, dry, which similar experience. Uh, guess I've grown to expect this from NAS and the price point of $36. 36 bucks for this is not that horrible of a price, though. I mean, if you're comparing it to, you know, um, if you're comparing this to, like, a, a Johnny Walker Black or a Highland Park Magnus, that's the same caliber. I think it stands up there with it. I mean, you know, uh, it, it's good if you're not wanting any pee, if you just want a nice sweet dram and you're not, you know, um, but... Would you be better off getting a monkey shoulder? Maybe. Um, it's, a, it's a tough one. It probably has more complexity than this, but um, 
It's still, I don't think it's that bad. Overall, he says it's average on its best day, mundane on its worst. An interesting attempt, but there's not enough to make me want to look for an older age statement bottle either. At least the group can tick off the distillery that's not easily attainable. They need to give the ABV a boost for starters. That's exactly what I said. Dump the blending mentality uh, 2.5 to 2.75, he says. So, yeah, I'm thinking 2.75 is, is a fair a fair um, rating on that. Uh, we're in a lot of, surprisingly, because Lee and I don't agree on a lot. Uh, when it comes to the sweeter drams, uh, I enjoy them a lot more, I think. But uh, he, um, he seems like his notes, he didn't really describe a lot of the flavors that I was getting uh, in detail. But uh, I think it's it's decent. You know, if you want something different than the typical 30 for 35 bucks, if you want something that's just, you know, a little different and you don't want the typical, you know, Johnny Walker or... Um, park uh, for something cheap I, I think it's worth a try so there you go let's go around here and look for the um the other guy hedonism <laughs> hedonism i should say as glunt john glacier likes to say per mr paul <laughs> i'm gonna that's a bad that's another bad habit i always say pedro Zimenez, and i now i gotta chase myself and say pedro Jimenez. so it sounds like i know at least a little bit what i'm talking about <laughs> but um Paul's really good about pronunciations, I've noticed. He's, 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 he's up there with Mr. Roy, I'd say. And he's an American. Imagine that. Ooh. Hello. That's different. Is this a... Does this have green in it at all? I don't think it would. It shouldn't. I mean, if, the, first, the first smell was kind of like a Japanese whiskey type of... Of hint, and then I'm like, and then I thought maybe I was getting some sort of uh, um, grain type of thing, but it might have been because I was thinking about the grain earlier. Let's do a little quick uh, drive by on the uh, computer and see if. Uh... Oh, yep, I, I did. It's blended grain. Well, there you go. I didn't even know. I don't even. I'm not even a big grain guy, and uh, I could pick it up from the nose right away. Hmm. Wheat, corn, and barley. Well, I'm not a big corn guy, so this might be iffy for me. Um, I do like the Phenomenology one. Um, I do like the uh, No Name is my favorite so far, next to the Phenomenology one. Um, I've had the uh, Great... Uh, is it the Great King Street? I, there was two different versions at the Expo. Uh, they had both. They had like a, a New York one and like a Boston, or I forgot the two cities. There's like two different cities they had. Uh, tried those they were good um, the double single was the only one I was kind of like eh, it's okay and I think it's because of the grain just kind of throws me off sometimes especially if it's corn heavy but um, this one seems like it's well blended so I'm not getting like you know yeah Glasgow I don't think I'm getting anything like one thing over the other and then Intensity. It's not. It's not like it's like pal. There's a lot of wheat, or bam. There's a lot of corn, or bam. There's a lot of malted barley, or anything like that. It's and and, the, and it's, it's got a sweet edge, and a, and there's some powdered sugar in there. Hmm. Some really faint fruit. It's not. You have to really dig deep on this one. I'm not sure if it's because of the grain or not. It's ex bourbon cask. Hmm. You do, I, I can't get the vanilla and in, 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 in the wood, you know, the... I'm assuming this is oak. Huh. Let's see if there's anything noteworthy to... But, I mean, I, you can definitely tell that the... Oh, uh, the no name, is it worth the money? Um, I'm trying to remember what the price point... I, I'm thinking it was like 200 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. And I'd say it's, I know it's pricey. I think it's worth it to get to get the bottle. If you're a collector like myself, you like to display bottles. It's worth it to have, you know, the art on the bottle and, and the experience of, of dealing with the scotch and displaying it. Um, it it's, it's definitely a great taste because it's got Ardbeg, Kalila, Dalloween, um, and uh, Kleinleash. It's got a really nice blend to it, um, heavy on the Ardbeg, thankfully, and that Kalila 
mesh is just perfect with our heavy smoke. A really good amount of peat. Um, nice and sweet, but balanced. I'm with it. Oh, 130 to 140. Well, that's that's definitely, I would say it's definitely worth it. Yeah, Phenomenology was the one I think that was closer to 200. If I'm, I think it was like 180, 189. And I think that's close to being worth it. I mean, it's it's damn good. It's, it's, it's a lot more fruit, and it's closer to what I would consider like a Hibiki kind of a taste. From having that 21, it was reminiscent of that to me. And I'm not sure if that's what they were shooting for, but if they were, then they definitely got pretty damn close, I'd say, to that type of whiskey. Yeah, I like it. I like the nose um, with all the things I was just talking about. The only thing that, that throws me off is the, I don't know if it's the corn or the just the grain in general, but something's just kind of a little off-putting, but I, I equate it to like a sawdust kind of a thing, but I always get that from grains for some reason. Well, let's uh, see what we think. We're going to go neat, 43%. I don't want to mess with it too much. Hmm. That's a hell of a lot better than expected, actually. Ooh, wow. Hmm. This is like... This has got like a, a heavy coconut, um, pina colada, pineapple, it, it, like a wave of sweetness, but then it kind of mellows out. Take another gulp for the, you know, get a finish, but yeah, I found a good price on that phenomenology. That was uh, 2 dollars here in Maryland. I, I, well, but this one particular place is really good prices. And anywhere else I go, um, yeah, people's prices are like $20, $30 higher. It's insane. That's why I always go to this one particular place when I am in Maryland. Um, it's worth the half-hour drive sometimes, even if the gas is, is high, because, um, you know, if you're saving 20 to $30 per bottle and you buy a bottle, you know, a bottle or two or three, then... You definitely make it worth the trip, you know. And please hit that like button. Please tell your friends if you're having fun. Oh, one thing I wanted to share with you guys is I am going to go through the videos I've done because I've had a lot of requests to make them shorter if I can. So I'm going to, um, you know, if I'm doing two bottles or three bottles per live stream, I'm, I'm going to go through the ones I've already done and I'm going to uh, basically try to edit them repost them not taking away the live show but just reposting them in like a 10 minute format tops maybe seven minute and um that way if people are just looking for some quick notes on one bottle they can go that way and just get what they want um when it comes to um uh the live stuff i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing and and because i'm having fun and i think you guys do too and uh it's uh it's cool to go back and, and just, you know, if you miss the show and you want to have the dream I'm having at the same time, even if it's a day or two later, it's kind of a, kind of cool to do that. Because I do that with Ralphie. I do that with Keith, uh, Malted Man Cave. I do that with the Scotch for Dummies, Scotch Test Dummies, Whiskey in the Six, Malted in Montreal. You know, you know all the guys. So it's good to have a virtual dram with, with, you know, people that on the side. And that's why I'm trying to do a high-end bottle and a, and a more affordable, you know, bottle. Because not everyone's got friends that are extremely generous like I do, thank God. Uh, I really appreciate my friends that have been gracious enough to either trade or, or you know, give out a, a really high-end sample. And some of these bottles can be three to $500. It's insane. Um, and uh, some people can't, you know, go out and just throw down, you know, two hundred, three hundred dollars on a bottle. So I definitely understand that. I, I, I definitely couldn't, and I, I think that's why you see a lot of people that are in the Scotch are older because they're the only ones that can afford it. <laughs> it's just no way in hell I'd be spending hundred dollars on a bottle of anything when I was tw in my twenties or even in my early thirties. <laughs> There's just no way. So anyway. This is good, but I'm going to have to go back for another taste to see if this uh, finish gets any better. The palette's damn good, though. The initial hit of fruit and coconut and the cream. It's even got a little medicinal in there. 
I wouldn't go as far as like an iodine from Lafroig or anything, but hey, thanks for stopping by us out here. Um, it does have a little bit of a like a slight antiseptic, but not in an off-putting way. It's it's really subtle. It's um, briny. It's a good maritime brine. Um, I love that palette, man. For a grain, a blended grain, that's that's impressive. I have to say, spices. You get some like some not I, I wouldn't go as far as like um you know any cinnamon or sage or anything like that but the spices i'm getting more like a peppery spice like a white and black pepper kind of a mix in the in the, in the back i'd say the finish is it was not long but it's medium it's decent the, the mouth coat's a hell of a lot better than that tom neville and um for 115, I think you guys said 120, 115. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's worth it, um, especially if you're a collector. And, and that's the funny thing about Compass Box. The more I experience with them, the more of the bottles and the, they they actually have their own um, art artists that they actually hire to do their bottlings and their artwork. It's extremely intense. It's it's fantastic. I, I can see myself growing more and more towards wanting to collect their series. The only thing that throws me off is I'm a single malt guy, typically. I like, you know, to stick with one distillery, one, you know, offering each from that distillery. Um, but the quality is there. I mean, you cannot, def you cannot um, denounce, you cannot say that, you know, these guys don't, do a great whiskey i mean no matter if it's blended uh, or if it's green or if it's whatever it is you know um I, I have to give them some some credit and props there hmm that is that is that is a nice well-rounded experience and, and i guess that's what makes compass box special is they can find ways to do that with just about anything that they have their hands on. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a, I mean, the double single wasn't bad. It just wasn't as good as, I don't think it was as good as this one, really. Um, and I think it might have been more expensive, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's the hedonism, I think, um, that's how you pronounce it. Hmm. And as you can tell, I think I enjoyed it pretty well. It's tasty. It's a little dry on the finish um, with the pepper, but it reminds me of like a Talisker without the darkness, without the molasses and the the um, the peat. It it's got the quality, but ninety nine bucks. Yeah, it's it's, huh? Yeah, it's quality. I, I'm I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely down with it. I might have to have another sample, guys. What do you think? You think I might have to pick up another one up? Cause I already went through those two. They're good though. It's very nicely done, sweet, peppery. And that white balance with the black pepper really does, and that's what I like Talisker a lot. They have the same kind of effect toward the end of the taste, and it really uh, comes through. If you're in the mood for that, Corey Vrickin from Ardbeg is the same kind of thing. What do you think I should get, guys? I showed you what I had earlier. Hopefully, you were around for that. Um, lots to pick from. It's um, it's a tough one, but man, I'm offense about picking up quite a bit for the yeah. I, I I definitely agree. Let's 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 take a little walk over here and let's take a look and see what else we got. Oh my goodness! Sorry for the shake. Oh, boxes. <laughs> Gotta clean that up later. Let's see. Oh man. Um, let's see what we got. We got Glen Tortures seven. It's a Battle Hill. Glen Grant ten. Royal Brockla twelve. Lafroy Brodeur Port Finish. Dalmore eighteen. Dolly Wayne 12, Bindu Black Mountain, it's a space side distillery, um, the Bonahaven Erd Negrain, uh, McKellen 21 Fine Oak, Dalmore Valor, Glenfiddich Select, Glendronic 21, we already did that, and we already did the Talisker, Arbeg 23, Brook Lottie 7.2 Octomore, uh, 
Belmick, 2008, eight year old. Looks like a Gordon McPhil. Uh, Machnamore, 12, uh, Pitivach. Uh, Lisa Bay, inaugural release. Uh, Westland, five year old. Moscatel Barrel, Winter Queen by Adelphi. Weller, um, that's a antique. Uh, some of these writings are, are tough to see. That's why I'm having problems with the focus. That's the old particular. Uh, Glenn Elgin, 12, or Elgin. Uh, Tullamore Dew, some specialized deal. Uh, Knock Nado, 15. McKellen Rare Cask. Uh, Tom Dew Batch Strength, number one. And a Glenn Farkless, 25. I got a Bowmore, 18 there. Uh, Kalila Mulk. And I could open up something else like an Ardbeg Araveritas or a uh, Lafroig Anquamor, uh, Bunahaven Krodek Vona. I think that's about it. Anything tickle your fancy? Uh, you want me to try one in particular? Do that Kalila, he says. Ooh. <laughs> I did see someone else that said uh, Kalila earlier, so that might be a good one. Richie Z thinks the Bunahaven. Um, which one, the Erlen Grain or the uh, Krulik Vona? There's two different ones I've got here. Um, let's see. Any other uh, requests? It might be good to kind of end it on the, the Kalila Mulk, though, guys, because I, I have been eager to try it. It's supposed to be, let's take a look, soft, smooth, clean, and fresh. It's Gaelic for dawn. That's the mulk. Uh, invokes the dawn of the new day. So late prizing. Uh, clearly from the slumber, picking out the shoreline of this little wooded bay. Hmm, it's probably going to be a little milder. It's 43%. Um, but if it's... Uh, I think it's slightly peated. I want to say that it, I'm pretty sure it is. It's uh, it's funny because on on the bottle on the box here you can see it says Kalila Distillery with Porta Sag and I know Porta Sag won't say they're a Kalila deal but you know they are. Well, hmm, I think we'll have to open it up. Yeah, let's 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 take a look at this one because this one I've been kind of eager and I think you guys might appreciate a Kalila like I do. I'm a huge Isla fan as you can tell, and uh, God bless I love whiskey. <laughs> All right, let me plug myself in here so we don't lose power. One second. We don't want any shenanigans. Ooh, I'm gonna get to do my patented Mark Broda double-handed uh, sniff here in a second with this puppy. This uh, 43%, that's a little on the lower end, but you know, can't be that bad, you think. Sorry for not having it open already, but I typically don't try to open up new ones unless I know I'm going to go in for something, especially if it's a review night or something. And I really appreciate you guys coming by, uh, having it with me. If you have a, if you have this one, pop it open. I had to order this uh, before Master of Malt stopped selling to the United States again for the second time. Uh, that's the only way I was able to get it. <laughs> Ooh, it's a tight cork, which is a good sign. Ooh. Now, my f my friends out there, I want you, I want to ask you that are Bunahaven fans, why is it they have the smallest corks out of all of them? I just noticed if I have any Bunahaven, it doesn't matter what if it's a twelve, eighteen, whatever range it is, when I get the cork and I pull it out, it's it comes out so easy and it's almost like it's not even thick enough to stay in there. Any other whiskey has not been like that. But Vino Havens always have like the smallest, tight, you know, really loose fitting corks I've ever seen. I'm not sure why that is. We're going to have a big pour on this guy. <laughs> is this going to be our last one, I think, of the evening? <laughs> All right. It's funny, when you hear and see this bottle, when you, see, you know, when you see Mulk, my instant, like, response was dark. I thought it was going to be kind of like the Loch Gorm from Kilhoman or something. But after doing some research, it's my pet and Mark Broda snuff. <laughs> it smells so good. Um, the, um, oh, you just, 
Salt Tears said he's bought an independent bottle. Sherry, five years. Ooh, I bet that's damn good, man. Oh, I bet that's fantastic. I wish we could trade stuff, man. If you weren't overseas, I would definitely uh, try to give you something for a sample of that. That's for sure. Um, let me see something here. Let's do the Kalila. I'm typing this into the distiller just to get some extra notes and see about what casks and what stuff's being used here. Um, it doesn't give me a cast type. Hmm. The word on the street is this is a seven to eight year old whiskey, even though it's not an age statement, but the, the word on the street is seven to eight, which is not bad, you know. Um, it's not readily available in the United States at all. It's pretty much travel retail only or in the UK. So you might, you know, if you're lucky enough to order it from um, Whiskey Exchange, if they still deliver, um, things like that, you might be able to get it over to the United States, but uh, it's an iffy. Always check your laws and check your, you know. Hey, Whiskey Throw, you missed it. I drank from the bottle, man. <laughs> yeah. But this is supposed to be, I think, slightly peated, but we'll see what we get. I'm a huge fan of the um, of the Clela 12, and that one has more of a smokiness than a peatiness. But that's okay. Sometimes I'm in the mood for more smoke than peat. That's why I go for like an Ardbeg Ugadal or a Clela 12, something like that. So this might be in that area, maybe a little younger. Um... If this is a 7 to 8, it might be like a Lagavulin 8, but we'll see if it's comparable or not, or if it's something completely different. Um, it's a little runny, but it holds its own. It's got, you know, it's got some distance between the legs. It's not too, too crazy. The color is pretty light, so this is 7 to 8 years. If, if there's any coloring in this, I would be really surprised. Let's see if they see anything on the bottle. I don't think they do. This is kind of dark down here, so I don't have the best... I have to see, but I don't think it's um, stated, but I would be surprised if there's coloring in this because it's, it's very a light, like a, a very light straw color. Ooh, has some peat in there, baby. Huh, there's some other things going on too right away. Hmm. I do prefer this nose than the Bunahav and Choi Chick, I will say that. Right off the bat, because the peat's there, but it's also got some nice, not only sweetness, but floral balance going on. So you get some, you know got the sugars you got the vanilla but you also got a little bit of the uh, the pear and the apple and you got a bit of the uh, vanilla in there and the peat it's it's slight though it's not it's not like sniffing you know a Lafroy by any means or a, a Kilhoman Mockier Bay anything like that it's it's a little more subtle but you can definitely tell it's there Hmm. Let's go for a little sip. 43, I wouldn't, you know, touch it with water unless I have to. Ooh, that's different. Hmm. I like that. It's different though. It's not like a the Choi Chick is, is is I don't know if it's higher PPM maybe. It's a little heavier on the peat. This is a little heavier on the smoke. I mean the peat's there, but it's definitely got more of um a, a rounded um taste and especially for the, the finish. Better finish than Choi Chick too, I have to say. There is a new Choi Chick called the Bunahaven Choi Chick Dina, D uh, with an uh, accent mark N-A, or Adina, something like that. And I have not tried that yet. It might be better. It's a second edition. Um, so the Choi Chick actually has been discontinued. 
So if you find, ever find the old one, it's unchill filtered. Uh, it might be worth a look. If you like a heavy peated, kind of like a, 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 a young, heavy peated whiskey, like a Lagavulin 8, the Twitch looks a lot like that. This is, I would have to say, a, a bit different in the, in the fact that it reminds me more of a Glen Scotia than it does um, like a young Isla Pete. It's, it's, you know, seven to eight years, but it's got some, it's not funk, it's, it's, it's definitely got some maritime goodness in there that I think is bringing some savoriness to the smoke, so it's, it's deeper, it's, it's, it's got a little bit of, um, it's got a little bit of gravy almost in there, in a good way, hmm. And it's that smoke. I'm sure that's that's making me think that. Maritime goodness. That's right, man. It's seashells. You know, you're sitting on the side of of a rocky coast, and the, the ocean's like spraying up there. You get that salty, briny taste in your mouth, but you can also, you know, picture a little smoke with that. Uh, it doesn't get any better. Let's have a lighter clearer feel. Um, Lighter in which which aspect as far as um, versus a twelve, it might not be as um, as smoky as a twelve, but I think there's more pee in it than the twelve. So it's it's not any lighter. It's just a different experience. Is is um, the only thing I, I could think of to explain that. Trying to think of, it, the, I think this it, with the salty, it's a salty, brinier version of a Kalila Twelve as well. Uh, so think of a Twelve with a little more salt, a little less smoke, but a little more peat. That's what the milk is like to me. Uh, best uh so far. I mean, the eighteen is damn good. Is it worth the hundred twenty, hundred thirty dollars versus the you know? Sixty, seventy dollars for the Benhaven Twelve. I don't think so. I think the Twelve is the best I've had so far. I like the Calvinock a little bit. I don't like the finish of it. I like the taste. It's like an orange cream sickle. It's got a peat in it. It's uh, it's smooth. It's okay. The you know the uh, the finish just was non-existent. The Choi Chick was definitely more like a Lagavulin Eight, peaty, intense. Um, but if you like that, you're gonna go for that more. Um, the um, when it comes to, I haven't had that Krogvona over there yet, and I haven't had the Erdnagrain yet. So that is something I'm gonna do in my next my next my next video. I do. I'm gonna pick one of those Bunhavens. I'm gonna have to pop one open because I do love the um, oh the Marsala 13. This this puppy right here. This is a good bottle. This is a uh, one. It's funny because I tried it at the Whiskey Expo in Indianapolis. I just had a sample. I did love it from the start. And then um, Scott from Scotch Test Dummies was gracious enough to hear me talk about it a lot and that I liked it. He sent me a sample of some salsa. So uh, I was very appreciative. And then um, I was looking enough to find a bottle and uh, got one after the fact. So. I've been drinking Bunnahaven 13 Marsala cask for quite a while. It's got black truffles in there. I love that. It's got that Marsala cask kick to it. It's got the the Bunnahaven 12 experience in there as well. It's 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 an overall really good one. Um, <laughs> no, nobody receives my computer. Uh, it's still being repaired. I, I spilled scotch on it unfortunately, so I had to get it. Uh, thank God I had the spill protection, but it was. Uh, that was a sad day, and I'm still waiting for that to be sent back. Hopefully soon. Sorry about the quality. I know the video sucks and the lighting and all that, but it's the best I can do under the circumstances with what I had to work with. But uh, we got some really good drams, at least. You got a 28-year first fill sherry. Is that an independent or is that a distillery? Um, if it's independent, who did that one dram? Just curious. Um... Yeah, it's kind of said I had a 21 uh, Akintoshin uh, from Berries the other day from a sample. And I was so disappointed. Because I do like Akintoshin. I like the American oak. I'm down with a three-wit if I'm in the mood for a really good molasses-y, sugary, sweet dram. But 
Oh, Alexander Murray. I, I like some of their stuff. Uh, I guess about the porn. <laughs> porn I think you're talking about my computer, huh? Well, it's got better video. It's it's got a decent video card in it. It's got a you know better sound. So that's why I want to get my laptop back, man. It's just a matter of getting them to send it back. Can L's fault line label. I'm not familiar with that, but um, I have yet to have a bad Ben and Hoven. So even you won't believe the price for uh, for was it was a 21 years. I'm gonna guess, man. I don't know. Three something, three fifty, oh twenty eight. Um, that's up there, man. Four fifty, five hundred, somewhere around there. I'm gonna guess. Kale Wines has a great selection. Yeah. What are the difference between the nose and the taste and the green and the single malt? Oh man, for me, I, I it's funny. I can detect the difference like Pam, and the sawdust from grain that I get is like the, the, the instant like pow, I know it's a grain. It, to me, it smells like sawdust. It's got like a, an overly intense, uh, woody smell, not just a wood cask, like Lafroy triple wood, for example. I don't think that smells like grain at all, even though it's heavily wooded. But if you, if I can smell like flakes of wood, like air, a lot of, what do you call it? Uh, aromatics of wood then that's where I'm getting that green kind of smell. And it, there's also some like um, mineral qualities to green that I pick up. 150, jeez, man. <laughs> that's used to practically like you stole it. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh my, yeah. I think this is also gonna do better with um, uh, some little oxidation on this uh, Kalila Mok as well. It's really nice. I haven't had a bartender's malt yet. I want to. I want to try it. I have seen it, but um, it's good to know that at least I know that you did not like it, so I won't be too overly excited to pick it up. Uh, at least I don't think that one's too expensive. I think that one's about forty, fifty bucks, if I remember correctly. But um, I, I could be wrong. But yeah, Akatoshi, the Lowlands are kind of a gamble because they're so. I guess thin compared to um, other ones, but I do like the the American Oak, and I like the three wood. That's the only two Alcantoshan I think I've had, other than that independent bottling of twenty one I didn't like. So just not much there going on. Is I, I think you know maybe age does isn't the best for all whiskeys. Wow, for a smooth, peaty, smoky sipper, this um, this is not this is not not bad at all. Some sweetness there. Yeah, I do prefer this better than the um, than a Bono Haven Choi Chick, um, and this finish is better than the um, the Kalbanok by Bono Haven too. So. I think I think Benohaven should just just concentrate on what they do best, and that's their twelve, their eighteen, their non-peated, smooth, toffee, buttery, great goodness of of, of whiskey. I just the same thing with Kalila. They should stick with their smoky and slightly peated scotch. Their unpeated stuff just doesn't just doesn't do it for me. It's like an opposite flip. Benohaven stay with the unpeated. Kalila stays with the smoky peated. End of story. Uh, you never see like uh, Lagavulin and um, do an unpeated for some reason, but maybe that's just because they tried it in house and they didn't like it. Um, has anyone had the Ardbeg Kill Dalton from 2014? I was lucky enough to find a bottle of that recently, and I do have one coming, um, so I'm eager to try it. It is unpeated Gardbeg, uh, I believe that's the one, or is that the 1980 one? I might be mistaken. No, I'm ha the Kildalton I'm getting is actually peated, never mind. They're, they did an unpeated version in 1980 of Kildalton uh, from Ardbeg. And I'm curious to see if anyone's had an unpeated version of Ardbeg and, and could tell me if they liked it or not. I'm curious. Um, same thing with Lafroig. I don't think I've ever heard of an unpeated Lafroig either. It's almost blasphemy. <laughs> you like the unpeated Kalilos? That's 17, man. It's just so olivey to me. 
it's it had it had like an olive oily overly salty kind of taste that's the only reason i, I didn't get into it um it's so it's okay it has some nice floral and, and herbal properties in the back of it that made me not give it a horrible score but uh it's very olivey and salty in my opinion but um sometimes i guess people are in the mood for that uh i remember alfie saying that he loved unpeated clearly each their own but yeah and that's the same thing with clown leash like i'm surprised you don't like that salt here but you know it's uh it's it, it is very subjective you know some people love uh really good heavily sweet drams like i do and some people can't stand them like the Art Big and No is another good, you know, they, the Scotch uh, for Dummies just did that review, and I was surprised some people just cannot stand it. Uh, I guess it's because it's a sweet, minty peat, um, and mostly young, and, you know, but to compare it, that to the Select by Lefroy, I think is insane, because that, the Select by Lefroy, I thought was a, just, just bad, just two, two star, run of the mill, lots of water, re just not a lot of flavor, just not, you know. But the Anno had, I mean, even though it's it's not as, as heavily peated as maybe the tin or as intense with the flavor, it still had a lot going on in it. It had a lot of sweetness. It had a lot of herbal stuff with the mint. It had, you know, some peat smoke in there. It'd be good for an entry, I think, to Ardbeg as a distillery overall for people that, you know, can't just walk into an Ugadal or walk into a quarry brick and be like, oh, this is amazing, so... Yeah, it, it, that was horrible. Uh, I'll agree with Salter on that deal. So, but anyway, the um, and I think uh, Hoagie mentioned something about the Talisker Sky. Now that's one I have not had. I do love the tin, and I do love the Distillers Edition. Those are the two bottles I have. Oh, I'm looking at over here. Um, do you have the regular Perpetuum? Yes, I do. I enjoyed it. I compared that to the Lagavulin Eight. Um, I think the perpetuum is overpriced. I think it should be half the price for what's one one ten usually. It should be about sixty bucks, seventy bucks. It should be about the same price point as Lagavulin Eight, in my opinion. Um, it's 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 a very similar breakfast dram. It's got similar, really good young peat qualities to it, but there's no sherry. There's no you know interesting other casks involved with it that I'm aware of. I'm gonna double check just before before I say that and look like an idiot, but I don't believe, going by memory or by taste experience, that that had anything else other than the typical, um, you know, uh, bourbon esque, uh, ex bourbon type of cask. Let's see what it says real fast. Um, I'm doing a quick search. Oh, there is ex sherry in there. I did not get that from the Perpetuum. Uh, it says former bourbon and sherry casks, but they were using the maturation process. But whatever sherry that they did, they must have used something that was not like your typical PX or Oloroso or definitely wasn't Fino or anything that I'm familiar with. I, I'd love to know what kind of sherry it was because it was completely undetectable in my opinion. Um, it doesn't really get the greatest reviews out of all all the uh, art bags, but it's it's worth a try. I mean, if you like the Lagavulin Eight, I think you're gonna like the Perpetual. I really do. It's it's got a similar taste profile. It's just the price that kills you. Um, the Perpetual was one of those bottles that you probably should buy two of, one for drinking and one for for saving. Sell it like three years later and make up the price of the bottle that you spend on one. That's what smart people usually do. If they can afford, you know, or save up and get two, you buy one for drinking, you save one for three years, and then you sell it, and then you didn't pay anything for the first bottle, and that way you don't feel like you're getting screwed. You know what I mean? Um, if you can pull that off, I, I would do that more often. I'm just not into doing after like second market selling stuff. I don't, I never liked the whole eBay thing or the whole trying to sell stuff, you know, after the fact, even if it's unopened, it's just kind of a, a pain in the ass. So it's, uh, ABV on the log of one eight. Let me look it up for you real fast. Cause I'm here at the old computer for, uh, the perpetual was 47.4 to be exact. For the Lagavulin 8, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess 46, but let's see if I'm right. It's uh, 48, actually, so pretty damn close. 
practically the same ABV on both too. It's uh, 47.4 versus 48. So, and I think the age is about the same on the Perpetuum. I think it's probably a seven to eight year old whiskey if I had to take a guess. And, and I don't understand why they don't put an age statement on it unless they do have some really good old stuff mixed with that seven to eight year stuff. But it's, it, the, the peat smoke is great on it. I think I, I like the peat smoke better on the Ardbeg Perpetuum than I do the eight. It's hard to get over the price difference so that's the only reason i'm kind of like yeah the milk uh that i just got here even buying it overseas it wasn't expensive at all it was i think um let me give you guys a price on that uh i don't know if you can get it from master malt anymore because they've been going through uh inbev just bought them and they've been having some issues where i think the tier that they are now they can't sell to the united states anymore which is really sad, um, but um, let's see if, uh, yeah, 56.48 is the price on the Moke, uh, and if you get a few bottles, you know, with it, the shipping's probably, you know, I don't know, $30, $40, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, not, not terrible. Um, if you bought it, I mean, and it's 70, you know, cilliters versus uh, 750 milliliters, but, it's not that much difference. We're only talking like a couple, a couple of drams. Um, so, you know, it's probably 75 to 80 after it's all said and done. And I think it's worth it. I think it is a good one. Just don't let the color fool you. I appreciate that they kept it natural. It's just a shame that when people see a really light colored whiskey like this, sometimes they you know, don't respect it as much as, and that's why Dalmore and people, you know, distillers like that, throw all that color in there because it makes you think that it's, it's worth more, that it's worth the extra, it's going to taste better. But is that reality? Not always. It's, it really isn't. To me, it's all about mouthfeel, the oil, the ABV. Of course, the age pays, you know, some some aspect in there i think roy has a good idea with the abcd of whiskey the age the bottling strength if it's colored and if it's chill filtered i'm sorry reverse the c and d but you know what i mean if it's chill filtered or if it's dyed that um and yes i'll say first yeah I, I like it i like it natural um and it i get i actually get more respect for it when i taste something that looks light that ends up having a good mouthfeel that has a lot of smoke, a little bit of peat, a little bit of sweetness. I think that's, you know. Yep, cheers to the straw colored gland. Yeah, the, the straw colored drams. I will say the straw colored glands. <laughs> that would be horrible. Uh, but you could tell I liked it. There's not really anything more than a little sip in there left. Hmm. Might be a little, you know, thin for some people as far as um, um, if they're wanting more smoke like the the twelve, but if you want a little more peat and a little more sweetness in there, then I think the milk is is worth a, a shot. I really do. I mean, it, you know, I love collecting like just off the wall stuff like that too. So it's always good to have it as an option. Uh, if you don't, I'll probably drink all it all through. <laughs> But uh, hopefully I can save enough that if there's a friend over or something, I can offer them something a little different that they'll never get, you know, uh, especially around here or at a bar even. Um, they'd have to specifically order it, you know, uh, to try it kind of thing. It's always nice to have a bottle like that or two, you know, if you can. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything crazy expensive. It's just something that's rare that's something, you know, people can't just go out and get. It's always kind of enticing, you know, it's intriguing. So... Well, thanks a lot, guys, for stopping by. I have to go to, uh, I, I can telework tomorrow, but I still have to work. And it's already uh, 1210, so we got to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for the likes and thumbs up, so I appreciate it. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, tell a friend if you know that's, that's even if they're not, you know, heavily in the whiskey, if they're kind of like just starting out. I've got a lot of re different reviews. I do Japanese whiskeys and scotches primarily. I try to keep it all, you know, in that realm. I don't, I'm not going to be venturing out doing bourbons and doing uh, Indian whiskeys or 
uh, anything out of the, the Scotch slash Japanese box, I'm pretty sure. Thanks for the, the comments too, guys. I enjoyed having you guys uh, stick around. Uh, and I really appreciate it. I know it gets late for you guys and uh, after the Scotch for Dummies do their show. But I, I am going to do a lot more uh, editing on the reviews. Uh, you're going to have uh, hopefully an easier time finding particular bottles. And um, I might be doing a little more sit down nice uh, reviews uh, as well. And I've got a, a good friend, uh, Tosh, who to help me out with the Linkwood and the Akintoshin, uh samples and the Paul John and the... Uh, uh, the Federal Cairn uh, Seven Year. Uh, he actually has a restaurant in DC. Uh, does is like their beverage manager. So uh, I might be able to do some on location shows there. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, maybe even doing maybe a couple of food pairings. Uh, I've never tried to do do Scotch with in, you know Indian slash uh, Nepalese or Tibetan food, but it might be worth a try. <laughs> and. Uh, if that doesn't go well, and I've had some Cambodian food that goes well with uh, scotch, believe it or not. I had this one dish that was um, catfish with mango, onions, red uh, like red peppers, and this really nice sweet sauce with it with some rice. And I had a Lagavulin uh, 16, and man, that, that sucker went hand in, hand in glove. It was perfect. Uh, it was great. Fried catfish from Cambodia. Who would have thought? <laughs> but... But more to come, and uh, we'll have some impromptu shows here and there, maybe on a Tuesday night or something. And uh, got lots of samples to get through, and I'm eager to share them with you guys. And uh, thanks again to Lee, Prane, Scott, and uh, Paul for uh, helping on the group, and we're hitting all the distilleries. And uh, it'll be nice to be able to say I've, I've tasted just about every distillery there is after this not this round, but the next round will be the, the end of the rounds. And uh, I think I have a couple to catch up with because I missed the first two, but we'll see. You ever had a taste of Amaranth? Oh, well, I've only Amaranth I've had is their Indian, uh, it's a uh, in, uh, Amaranth rye. That was really good, actually. That made me almost want to get into Indian whiskey. It was that good. It was like a 4.5 out of 5. Very hot, uh, nice, spicy. Uh, the price, I think, is high on that one. Don't quote me on it. Uh, you might have to look it up. But the Emirat Rye is worth a look if you can get a good price on it or if you get a sample. I think it's worth a try. Um, but, you know, I'm not a master of uh, of Indian malts. But for rye, I've had a few rye here and there. And I, I can tell now what I like versus what, you know, is it maybe too dilly or too uh, um, not enough flavor, you know, but... High West uh, Midsummer's Night's Dram is a good example of a good rye, I think, and um, it's kind of, you know, even better than, I think, that one, so that should tell you something right there. Well, take care, and, uh, oh yeah, you've seen it? All right, well, uh, if it wasn't over, like, I, I don't know if it's 300 or 200 or what it runs, but if it's not too, you know, far out of your price range, then definitely give it a, a consideration, and, uh, well, well, thanks guys take it easy slancha and uh we'll be doing lots more of those reviews as you can sell from all those bottles over there <laughs>